guys and welcome back on this week's show part seven of our scale model build well when i first started this build i did say i might be biting off more than i could chew and here we are at part seven i hope you're all still with me and i hope you're all still enjoying it um, the way we're going to start off this week's show is those stacks that we drilled out last week, we're going to get them glued into place. Well, if you remember last week, we finished up with gluing on all of these sections here onto the chassis. So you should be able to just put this thing on its side now in order to get our stacks installed. Now, this, this isn't any kind of magic. Remember that we didn't glue this bottom piece in because we need it to adjust it, but basically it just glues in place here on the side of the rig. We can put in our bottom stack and it will get glued in place, just making sure that this top piece here is square to the side of your body so that it looks right when you turn it upright. So again, no trickery here, just make sure everything lines up and glue it in place using the plans as reference. Well, the stacks are glued in place and I'm quite happy with the overall results so far on this model. But I think the next step that I want to take as far as its construction will be the wheels. And um, I have another video on the show demonstrating how to make highway wheels. And that is all that is being installed on this particular model is highway wheels. The dimensions are the same. So I'm not going to show the process here on the show but I will try to remember to drop a link down in the description below to my show demonstrating how to make it. These programs are pre-recorded, so on the day of the posting, if I should forget to post the link, please feel free to drop me a comment to remind me to put that link in there. Anyway, guys, if you're interested, check out that link and uh, make some wheels and get them on this model. we've got all the wheels turned and we're going to take a break from that for now. We still have to do the rims. Um, I'm just going to give my head a rest because it's, um, it's a tedious process. I'm going to move on to smaller details and for that we're going to be doing the sun visor that goes on the front of the rig. Now these are the brackets here. It's all cut out of 1 16th inch stock and you can rip it on your table saw cutting to the outside of the blade using that combination square trick I showed you and just cut these small pieces here these are the small brackets follow the uh, measurements on the prints i just use the small parts cutting jig to do that and now i'm going to take this piece i'm going to use an oscillating drum sander to sand this inside curve and a scroll saw to cut the outside curve we're going to give this a sanding and then glue it on the front of the rig well now that the sun visor is done we're going to be working on the grab handles on the side of the truck and this is nothing more than doing the exact same glue up like what you did for the brackets of the mirrors. However, there is some flanges that go on here. So what I've done is taken a quarter inch dowel and using the method I showed you earlier, I've drilled a hole in the center of it, 332nd inch in diameter. And using a little miter box here and a fine razor saw, we're going to basically slice off slivers of this at 1 16th of an inch uh, in width. Now, you could try this on the table saw if you like with a um, small parts cutting jig, but I'm, I'm telling you, they're just going to blow apart. So you're going to need four of these little things. You can see how small and delicate these are. So I'm going to cut two more and then we're going to glue up and install these handles. Um, nothing really special here, guys. I just want to show you the method of making these little uh, flanges that go on those grab handles. Well, we now have that sunshade mounted on the front of the rig and the grab handles on the side. Um, 
The wheels are just dry fit, but we're going to deal with that a little later. And the next part that we're going to work on will be these back fenders and the mud flaps. And it's mostly just a bunch of flat work. And you can pretty much follow the dimensions that are listed on the plans. Um, I've cut some pieces using the small parts cutting jig, like these end caps and these little gussets that are here. But there is one weird looking piece, which would be this piece. And that is, of course, the fender spacer. Um, they list no dimensions, really, no angles to cut. And it's such a small piece that it's very difficult to be able to cut that. So in the interest of safety in cutting the piece, um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it as a square piece of stock. We're going to take some measurements directly off the plans and that will give us the opportunity to mark the angles that we need. And then I'm just going to take it over to the belt or the drum sander and just sand up to those lines. Um, this is more of a decorative piece and it really doesn't have to be exact angles the way that the gussets have to be exactly 45 in order to get them to fit properly. It's a decorative piece and it's not worth losing a digit over cutting it. So cut it on the scroll saw if you really wish. You want to mark it out and cut it on the scroll saw, you could do that as well. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody losing a digit on a scroll saw. Maybe a, a little nick on the finger once in a while, but never lose the, uh, lost a digit. Anyway, uh, let's get those marked up and sanded up, and then we're going to assemble those fenders, which is really nothing special other than being sure that you're using squares to verify that everything is straight. Your gussets will help with that to get the ends of the fenders on square to the top end of it. And we can get those glued up and start prepping them to go on the build. Okay, so we've got the fenders glued together. Now, you may not think there was much information about it, but it's as simple as gluing it up and checking for square and making sure that the pieces line up. Um, what we're going to work on now is the mud flaps that also attach to this particular unit and they kind of have a funny looking piece and it would be this piece here which is a 1 8 dowel that has like this flat section on it and it's not as difficult as you might think and I'm going to show you a method here where we can cut several of them all in one shot and uh, be done with it and it all starts with a little piece of three quarter inch MDF. I've taken a piece of three quarter inch MDF. The length really doesn't matter here as long as it gives you some room to work but the height here is at two and a half inches or the width in this case is two and a half inches. The pieces of dowel that we need to mount the mud flaps on are two and a quarter and I'm going to explain that the relationship between those two measurements in just a bit. But we've got this piece of MDF and we're just going to mark a center line down the middle. So that will be at three eighths of an inch. So we're just going to mark this center line. Now we need four pieces of dowel. So I'm going to be drilling one eighth inch holes at this mark along here. I'm going to make a couple extras. So I might drill six holes, but drill some through holes in this and then I'll see you when we get back where we have our holes drilled and all we're going to do is take a 1 8 dowel which is what is required by the plans and just tap it in until we bottom out right there we just bottomed out here flush with the bottom of where we drilled our holes we're going to put all of them in here I have quite a few extras in case some get buggered up and then you know I can pick the best ones that I like but just tap those in there just carefully and then we've also transferred our center line onto the edge of our um, board here and that is going to be a reference line for setting up our table saw. Our blade is set to a height of 1 and 9 sixteenths and that coincides with the length that we need of that flat spot on the dowel. We've set the fence so that the edge of the tooth is going to cut right on the center line of this dowel. So theoretically, when we cut, we will be cutting off half of that dowel. So we're going to turn the saw on 
and carefully run this through. And now if you like, you can put this end here that you've cut against the fence, set your fence distance from the blade to the final length of our dowels, and then cut this whole thing to size. We're just going to pull one of these out of here so you can see the flat section. I don't know if it shows it there, but we have the dowel split right down the middle in a nice flat section there so that we can attach our mud flap to it according to the plans. Well, we have our pieces here. I'm just going to show you a dry fit run of how you want to go about mounting these fenders. I'm putting this square in behind here just so that I don't push the fender in too far because that mounting dowel only goes flush to the back of the inside of the frame. Now we're going to use a square here. We've got a two inch square and before your glue dries you just want to square up that fender to the frame just like that and we're going to do the same thing for the back. Now you won't need to worry about how far this one pushes in because it has this back piece that will block it. But once again frame or square up to the frame and just square up that mud flap and make sure that it's all square. And let it set up a little bit before you start mucking with it too much. You can double check a few times if you like. Once you're happy with the square of that, you can mount your fenders. And there is the one other piece, which is this little mounting bracket. Again, just cut it from a larger piece of stock to keep your fingers well away from the blade. And we're just going to snap this into place carefully and check it for dry fit. And there you go. There is the rear fender of the model. And we can just glue this in place now. I'm pretty happy with the clearance on the tires. We have at least an eighth of an inch up there, which is fine. Just want to keep in mind that these should be square to the frame and that everything should fit nicely in there and nice and snug. So I'm pretty happy with that. Once I glue it in and dry it up, I can do some final sanding here to clean up this one edge and this back edge here. But that would be pretty much about it for those fenders now. So finish up your fenders and glue them in place. Well, now that you've got those mud flaps and the fenders on the back of the rig, hopefully you can see why it is that I didn't put them on earlier. Those pieces are just screaming to be busted off as you're fooling around with the frame and working on the other pieces. So while you're building through the process of the model, you really need to think ahead as to how the pieces are going to affect your work throughout the entire process. So you've got the back ones done and now we need to put the front ones on, but it's really the same process. You need that little 45 degree gusset, which you will cut from a larger piece and then cut it down, keeping your fingers safe away from the blade. And then it's a matter of cutting the mud flaps and gluing them into place, making sure that they're uh, square to the body of the, uh, of the truck or to the frame. So we don't need a video segment on that, but glue them all up and uh, we're getting close to the end of the actual cab of this entire build. Well, we're going to move on now to the hubs of our wheels. And um, what we're going to need for that is the proper thickness of stock. So cut yourself some stock that is 1 16th of an inch thick using that combination square method that I showed you. Also, you're going to need a few pieces of 15 32nd inch stock. Now, regardless of whether you're doing the front or the back rims, the process for the drilling of the holes and that sort of thing is all the same. So you're going to be starting off with your piece here and what we have, this is 1 16th thick by inch and a half by inch and a half. We've marked our center line and we're just going to use a compass here and draw a 1 and 3 16th of an inch diameter circle on it. And this will be turned on the lathe, but what we're going to do is now that we have all of these marked with the centers and the circumferences of our rims, we're going to take them over to the scroll saw and trim off all of these corners before we take them to the lathe. 
So now that you've got everything rough cut, you can see that they're not pretty and they're not meant to be. You're just knocking off the rough corners. We've got all of these done here. You may be thinking, man, he's got an awful lot here for this truck. Well, I'm going to be doing the trailer as well, and I might as well make them at the same time. And sometimes you break these things, so you might as well get with it and make some extras here, seeing you're already setting up for the process. The next step you want to do, take each one of these over to the drill press and drill a quarter inch hole in your center mark. Over at the lathe, I have all of our pieces mounted up on a pen mandrel, and I've sandwiched the thinner ones in between the thicker stock in order to give it extra support. From there, it's just a matter of using a three-quarter roughing gouge and roughing it to round and then bringing it slowly down to its final dimension of one and three sixteenths. I have my calipers set and locked in to 1 and 3 sixteenths, and once I'm happy with the final dimension being just a little hair larger than that, I can just give all of the pieces a light sanding. Now you don't want to sand too much because you'll take away too much of the dimension, but just a little light sanding with some 220 grit and you should have all the proper sized discs then to make your wheel hubs. You can separate all of the pieces now off of this pen mandrel and we're not done. Some of them will go back onto the lathe. The others will just get straight up drill press work. But there you have all of your discs that are all exactly the same size and uh, really it's nothing more now at this point than setting up a very simple jig. Well, the first step to this jig is get yourself a scrap piece of three-quarter MDF and we have the pattern photocopied from our prints of our hub. And what I've done is I've applied some spray adhesive to the back. I've let it set up for three minutes to get it nice and tacky. And then once that is done, we're just going to place it down on our MDF. The next step is actually quite simple and we have eight holes here to be drilled around the uh, outer diameter here of our hub and what we're going to do is for holes that are adjacent, which means across from each other if you're not sure, we're going to line up our center lines with a ruler here and we're going to draw a line right across and outside of that circle so that it will extend beyond our hub. We will now do it for the next set coming across here and then the next set and the next set giving us a whole bunch of cross section lines that will extend beyond the outer diameter of the hub pattern. You now want to take your jig over to the drill press and in the center of this hub you want to center punch that very very carefully and drill a quarter inch through hole right through the jig. Now here's where I love the simplicity of this jig. It's almost embarrassing to call it a jig because it, it really isn't that special. But what we have done here is I've got a stop block placed at the edge of our fence here and our jig will sit against this stop block and as well it will sit against our fence. And it is set so that it will drill right into this right hand hole here of the hub. Now it doesn't matter which one you line it up for, you could line your drill butt up to drill any of them. 
and I've drawn a center line across one of our little discs here and extended it onto our edge. And all we're going to do is place this over our quarter inch hole, take a short piece of quarter inch dowel and push it down inside to secure our disc in place. I'm gonna line up our edge line with one of our lines here which preferably now would be the one that we're drilling. And we're just going to drill a hole down through. Now these holes are 3 16 of an inch. So make sure that you change your bit from your quarter inch bit so that you're not drilling the wrong size hole. Now we're using a brad point bit to get some more accuracy. But there's our first hole drilled. Our next one now is as simple as rotating this disc until it lines up with the next line. And as soon as it lines up, double check it, make sure it's nicely in place, hold your disc firmly, get that point of the brad point into your stock, and very carefully and very slowly drill down through. Just like that. Now this one broke away a little bit, and that happens with some of these, and that is why we make extras. But we will now rotate it, to the next line and then drill our next hole. Like that. And as you go around the hub of this, you will end up with all of your holes being drilled and then it's just a matter of sanding these hubs the thin ones and gluing in them into place on your rear wheels of your truck. I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. But as I said, we did have some breakaway on this one. So this one here is junk. And that is part of the problem with these is that you're so close to the edge and they're so fragile that they are breakable. So make extras, guys. Drill out your hubs and when you get four usable ones, come back and see me. So as we can see here, we now have the hubs for our rear uh, tires done. Now, when I first looked at the plans, I saw that 1 16th of an inch thick material for these, and through experience, I thought, that seems a little thin. So I tried it anyway, and I will tell you that I actually destroyed 12 of them before giving up. Now, call it persistence, call it determination, or just plain stupidity, um, I actually gave up on it and doubled the thickness of those uh, discs or rims or whatever you want to call them to one eighth of an inch, which gives a lot more uh, material to be able to drill through and a lot less tear out. Now, if you're concerned about that, it's no big deal. You can always drill those inch and a quarter holes that are in the center of your tires. You can drill them a sixteenth of an inch deeper and then it's all the same. It works out exactly the same. But considering that those um, holes are actually drilled at three eighths of an inch deep, I will install these hubs and it's really not going to make that much of a difference. So why don't we step over to the bench. I'm going to show you how to glue these in uh, the easy way before we go any further with these front hubs. Well, the easiest way that I have found to install these hubs and get them just right is to use your pen mandrill. And this is the same thing that you turn them on in the first place. So take the hub, choose which is your nicest side to face outward, and just put the tiniest little dabs of glue on it. Don't use a lot because you don't want the squeeze out. So just a couple little drops, like barely need any at all. These are not under any kind of pressure or any kind of stress. We're going to put it over the pen mandrill to fit inside the rim or the, the wheel, as you can see there. And then once you get that done, a quarter inch fender washer fits in there perfectly and then along with another little washer for some pressure and then screw the thing together with your retaining nut of your pen mandrill. Let that sit for a while and set up and then once you're done just take it off the mandrill and make the next one and glue it up. Um, the mandrill allows your center hole to be lined up and everything to be centered and you know what? No fuss, no muss, guys. Use what you got.
Using a pen mandrill once again, I've got the thicker pieces of our hubs uh, mounted up in the lathe between centers, and I'm just marking a mark one quarter of an inch in from the edge, and I'm just going to make sure that that's marked all the way around, and this will represent where we're going to start our taper. Now it just turns out that I had some bushings here that are normally used for turning razor handles and uh, they happen to be the right dimension for the center of our hub where it will come to a point. So using a small spindle gouge here, I'm just going to turn it from the edge up to the, um, the bushing just tapering in the top and what we're trying to do is basically mimic the hubcap of this particular front tire. And once you get it shaped the way you like it and the taper is how you want it, just give it a light sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper and take all the rough edges off and uh, that is really it we've got a little bit of tear out there but this one was just a test piece and we did make extras so we will be just fine for turning the other ones and now that you've got those turned you glue them in in the exact same fashion as what you glued on the back ones using your pen mandrill as a guide if you don't have a pen mandrill quarter inch drill bit works just the same. You get a good tight fit, the glue won't stick to the steel shaft of the drill bit, and of course it will line everything up for you perfectly while you clamp it in place and give it time to set. So you should end up with something that looks like this. And if you're happy with those results, of course, you can move on. And once again, that would be all the time that we have for this week's show. Um, it's really coming along. I sure didn't expect it to last seven episodes but it looks like we're shooting into episode eight and I'm gonna try to wrap it up there. Uh, I've gone through the plans of the trailer guys and I'm telling you there is absolutely nothing that I could film while making that trailer that you couldn't figure out through any of the processes I've shown you here doing this, uh, the, the actual engine part of this. So I'm not gonna be filming any of the trailer build. Um, hopefully I'll have it finished in time when this airs to show you how it worked out and how it turned out. But other than that, there's really not much to say about it. So we're going to carry on with part eight to finish this up and wrap it up next week, we hope. And uh, I hope you're going to join me then for yet another woodworking video.